My Balsamic, the web-based application for developing wireframes and interactive digital prototypes. So the University of North Carolina at Charlotte has a My Balsamic site, and that's where I am right now, and you can see lots of students have already created projects. So you can go into a project that is already created. Um, the number that's in brackets after each tells you how many wireframes or mockups have been created inside of each project and you can edit the settings of those projects. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project and I will call it demo and I can give a description and I can also invite people to work on the project with me so this supports collaboration. I won't bother with that now. So once I create a project it's going to open it up for me. It's also going to bring up this help dialog box to help get you started but I'm going to close that. And so now I'm in my demo project, and you can see here that there aren't really any mock-ups here, but I can add a new mock-up. Um, and so again, Balsamic calls an individual wireframe a mock-up. So I will click here to create a new mock-up. And it's thinking about it. It's loading the interface and it's loading all the different widgets. Okay, so here we are and now we can start building a wireframe. So we have this canvas area here. Um, this is a listing of all the mockups that we've created as part of this project. And um, up here we have groupings of different widgets that you can add to your mockup. So um, we might want the containers widgets, which have things like a web browser or a window or tabbed field area, things like that. And then there's buttons and there's things like an iPhone layout. Uh, and there's also markup, which is what you can use to communicate about your mockup to other designers. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to drag a window in here to my canvas and I'll give it a name, Celine's application. Okay, and I can resize the window and I also have this little dialog box up here. When I open this up, I have a, very, a bunch of settings of things that I can change about um, this thing. So I could, for instance, add a scroll bar here. Um, I can say that I want these aspects of the window to be showing the, the X and, and minimize and maximize buttons, the sizing uh, indicator down at the bottom that kind of thing. So this helps me to sort of specialize and to customize this particular widget. And then I can just close that when I'm done. So now that I've got a, an application window, I want to add some content to it. And what I think I'm going to do is a tab um, area. So I'll do a tab area and I'll have three tabs. So home, uh, tools, library, for instance. And I'm then going to stretch out this um, tabbed area so that it takes up about that much space. And then I will maybe add a button at the bottom. So maybe I'll add a button down here. Um, and that might be a, um, a quit button, for example. Okay. And so then I can start to actually make copies of this so that I can change um, each version to be sort of a different view of the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to set the home tab to actually be selected in here. So here it says um, selection and I will say home tab is selected and now you can see that the home tab is actually open. So um, what I will do is I will save this and I will call it uh, home screen and now you can see it's been saved over here. Now what I can do is I can actually duplicate this window. So I'm going to go up to the project menu and say new clone of current mockup and now I've got a second version of it. So in the second version of it what I can do is set one of the other tabs to be selected. So I click on these tabs and in selection I say okay now the tools tab is going to be selected and maybe I actually want a scroll bar um, on this tab and I want to show where we are in the scroll bar there we go okay so that's what this one looks like and maybe I'm gonna add some um, content here a bunch of check boxes um, some buttons that kind of thing a color picker um, a combo box. So you can get the idea of all the different types of things that you can add to different types of widgets you can add to your wireframe. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my home screen and I'm going to duplicate it again. Clone. And now I will make the third tab be active and open. So now we'll say library is open um, and we'll add a scroll bar again. This time we'll have the scroll bar be further down and um, I think that's fine. Maybe I'll change the color here when we get to the library. I'll make the library have a light green color. Okay. So there's lots of customization you can do here. And so for the library, I might want to add um, some text, a text box. So let's see if I can find a text box. Um, and I might actually just want to use this quick add feature, which allows me text area. That's what I want. Text area. Okay. So there we go. Um, and I'll stretch it out and start typing some stuff in it. Add some text. Okay. So now we have um, a library tab and we have a tools tab and a home tab. And I'm going to go ahead and save these all. So at this point, I have three mockups. So tools and library. So I now have three different wireframes. So at this point, I could be just add some extra details, um, make this look nicer. And then I could print it out and I've got a basic set of wireframes that I could um, print out and show to somebody. But if we want to make this into an interactive digital prototype, we can now take this a step further. Because we've actually saved each of these screens and give them names, we can now create links between them. So if we go back to the home screen um, and we look at the tab area, we can actually make some settings. So we can, you know, change this to be a different color, for example, but we can actually add links here. So I can say that when we click on the home link, we're going to stay here. But when we click on the tools tab at the top, we're going to go to the tools screen. And when we click on the library tab at the top, we're going to go to the library screen. Okay. And you can see that as I add these links, you get these little hints here, the little arrows showing there's a link here. And I can also come out and I can add a link to the quit button to link somewhere as well. So um, I won't bother with that, but let's now go over to the tools screen and we'll do the same type of thing. So maybe I'll change the tools to be another different color, um, but we'll add the links in here. So home, links to home screen, tools, links to the tools screen, and library, links to the library screen. Right, and now we get over to our um, library tab and again we add the links. Okay, so now we can basically save everything. And then we can go to the view presentation mode. And you can see here that we get this uh, big arrow that is our cursor. And this arrow allows us to link between the different pages and maneuver to see the different content. So this really allows us to test the flow of our application and make sure that there aren't any dead ends, that when you get to any screen, you can always get back to the previous screen or to the home screen, that type of thing. Okay, and we press escape to get out of this presentation mode. Um, and then we can uh, close the project. And once the project is closed in here, we can go to the edit button and we can actually export to PDF. And that's how we would print out just the screens. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good sense of how you can create um, really nice digital wireframes in Balsamic, but you can also create these interactive prototypes that allow people to really test out the flow of your application. That's all for now.